Hi, my name's Kyla Raby. And I'm Dr. Narita Shazal. I am Lena Garcia Dasa. And my name's Jinta Meebolds. Access to safe, suitable and sustainable short term accommodation and longer term housing provides a crucial, crucial foundation for survivors of human trafficking and modern slavery when recovering from their experience of exploitation. However, it is often very difficult to source for support services assisting them. Our research looked at barriers in accommodating survivors in Australia, and it involved stakeholder mapping, undertaking surveys and interviews with caseworkers who source accommodation for survivors and accommodation providers, as well as an analysis of casework data. Our article discusses the main barriers our research identified, which relate to survivors' eligibility for and the suitability of accommodation. Firstly, we demonstrate how survivors are not eligible for many accommodation options due to their immigration status or a lack of income, and we discuss the often interconnected nature between these issues. For example, survivors on temporary visas are restricted from accessing social housing in many Australian jurisdictions and a quarter of all accommodation services surveyed, as these are only available to Australian citizens or permanent residents. Indirectly, an individual's immigration status can also restrict their ability to work or receive government income support payments, making them also ineligible for accommodation services which require residents to have an ongoing income. Within the limited options that are available to them, our research also found that there is a shortage of accommodation which is suitable for survivors due to the absence of survivor-specific services. Stakeholder mapping identified only two cities in Australia that have safe houses specifically designed for survivors of trafficking or forced marriage. These services were highlighted by, by caseworkers as being the most suitable for survivors. However, limited capacity and location restricted their availability. Taking a holistic approach to supporting survivors in their recovery involves ensuring um, services that not only provide accommodation, but also an individualized response tailored to survivors' unique needs However, such an approach is largely absent in the Australian context. Further demonstrating the need for survivor-specific services is our finding that many accommodation services available to survivors may be unsuitable due to rules and requirements imposed by accommodation providers that are not supportive of survivors' unique needs. These include restrictions on survivors' freedom of movement, on the use of alcohol and drugs, and on accommodating men, children and extended family, as well as requirements relating to engaging in activities. For example, rules such as curfews are often put in place by accommodation providers to ensure the safety or comfort of all residents. However, they restrict an individual's freedom of movement and therefore may not be suitable for, for survivors whose trafficking experience involved similar restrictions. Research participants commonly noted the serious implications of these barriers. In addition to rendering survivors vulnerable to homelessness, such situations place survivors at risk of being re-trafficked or further exploited. An accommodation provider explained that such barriers place victim survivors at high risk of remaining or returning to a situation where they're subjected to abuse by a person who uses violence. Survivors may also re-enter an exploitative working situation to secure accommodation for themselves and any of their dependents. Insecure accommodation also has a disruptive impact on survivors' recovery and negative implications for their overall well-being. Australia has a federated system of governance where anti-slavery policy is a federal responsibility and housing policy is a state and territory responsibility. Therefore, removing these barriers requires effective collaboration across both policy spheres and tiers of government. In our article, we make several recommendations for initiatives within both areas to improve access to accommodation for survivors. Expanding referral pathways to trafficking-specific visa frameworks and government-funded support would enable more survivors to access to these, thereby also increasing their access to accommodation. 
ensuring all survivors are granted visas for longer and with permission to work and access government income support would also enable survivors greater economy independence and increase their eligibility for accommodation. Allowing survivors on temporary visas to access social housing and government funded accommodation services would also open long term options currently unavailable to them. Currently, the federal government provides funding for accommodation for survivors through a support framework which relies on existing accommodation services being available to and suitable for survivors. However, our research has demonstrated that unfortunately, this is largely not the case. Therefore, trauma-informed and person-centred accommodation services in each state and territory designed specifically for survivors are urgently required. Survivors of human trafficking and modern slavery often have specific needs resulting from their traumatic experiences. Accommodation plays a central role in supporting survivors' recovery, allowing them to focus on other aspects of their lives. Changes to Australian federal anti-slavery policy and state and territory housing policy are urgently required to remove barriers to accommodating survivors and prevent risks of re-trafficking and other harm.